Left steady zero six uh, five. Phones are working. Order. Flight order. All hands. Man your flight. Three miles. Three miles. Come in 500 yards of skirt and stand up. The Tigers will leave this ship with a great feeling of dedication that the young American sailor has today towards his ship, his command, and his country. They're going to be able to see many ships maneuvering with each other. It'll be a once-in-a-lifetime experience, a fabulous opportunity. Right two degrees, turn to course zero six six. Very well. Turn to course zero six six, checking zero five eight. All is that standard, indicate pitch and turns for 17 knots. Like uh, Very well. We'll discuss this with your commanding officer, uh, via Navy Red. Over. Captain Dallas Bethay commands the state-of-the-art guided missile cruiser USS Cowpens, displacing less than one quarter the mass of the great battleships of World War II. Kalpin seems no match to those powerful dreadnoughts, but concealed under her sleek exterior stands a lethal arsenal of missiles capable of destroying multiple sea, air, and land targets up to 1,000 miles away. The USS Kitty Hawk battle group has operated together for the past six months since we left San Diego on November 3rd of last year. It's been a long, tiring voyage, and the crew is looking forward to seeing family and friends on the home stretch, a special event known as a Tiger Cruise. A Tiger Cruise is an opportunity for relatives and friends of crew members, both male and female, to come out and ride the ship, normally from its last port in a deployment to the home port. And in our case, in the Pacific Fleet, it's from Hawaii to San Diego. Let me go ahead and pack the hat. Okay. I'm not going to wear it. My expectations would be to spend some very good one-on-one -on -one time with my son. Where are you going to have fun? Uh, without the competition. Uncle, get your chariot. From the family, as you would normally have it when he's home. My checklist here. Can't believe you're going without me. Dick Chuska <gasps> is newly retired from a major oil company. His only son, Richard, is a seaman aboard the Calpins. We're going to cruise a little over seven days at sea on his ship. I think that'll be wonderful. We call it a tiger cruise because anyone who comes out and joins us has to be a tiger for seizing this opportunity to spend five to eight days at sea, working with the crew members, seeing how they live, seeing how a Navy ship operates and experience yeah. a gusto of going to sea. Toothbrush, toothpaste. Yeah, toothbrush. Can't forget your toothbrush. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to see my uncle's ship. I think it'll be real fun. And I heard they'll be firing some of the guns and stuff, and I really want to see that. I'll be able to find out <laughs> what his uncle actually does for a living. And he can come back and tell me what my brother does for a living. You ready? Yeah. Let's go. Ready. Kirby Burleson is a 14-year-old student with typical interests in video games and music. I think it's a great opportunity for Kirby. He may one day want to join the Navy, get a f free education. He's never been to Hawaii. I'm a little jealous that he gets to go before I do. From all across America, over 1,000 Tigers converge at the Honolulu International Airport. As a special guest, each will soon join one of the six warships in the Kitty Hawk Battle Group. Oh my God. Hi. <laughs> oh my God. USS Cowpens. Anybody go to the USS Cowpens? Just outside the door, sir. If you could gather in a group, there's a whole bunch of them out there. And stick with them, and I'll take everybody down the baggage claim, and we'll all go to the bus together. Accompanied by their official sponsor, the Tigers quickly learn the realities of living with a vertical floor plan. I think I counted the, uh, there were 12 stairs on every unit that you go up and down, and going from mess to bunk, there's three sets of those, and going from bunk to the 05 level, there's eight sets of those. I was worried about not getting worked out on the Stairmaster, but I think maybe I've been getting some compensating exercise. 
Now make preparations for getting underway. I have set several goals for the Tigers on board the USS Cowpens. First and foremost, I want to treat them like VIPs. And so we have gone to great lengths to provide the best of facilities for our Tigers and to give them an opportunity to really enjoy and absorb everything that we are doing aboard this ship. I want them to see every square inch of this ship and absorb the total experience of being at sea aboard a U.S. Navy warship. After being on board for six months of just living with the same people, that it's real nice, you know, to have family members come on board and really get the feel of how everything's going at home, just being with one person from your family, because they're telling you what's happening at home and filling you in all, all the details. And it's just, it helps a lot to have them on board before you get home. why the bridge is up so high is the higher you are, the farther you get to the ski with the curvature of the earth. Having the Tigers on board is kind of exciting for me. Kirp Kalbfleisch joined the Navy fresh out of high school. In 15 years, he has worked his way up to chief fire controlman. Provide the operator in the aircraft with a picture of what he's looking at. Having helped to build this ship and having been on board for three years, I'm real proud of having been on board Calpens as long as I have and getting a chance to show her off just puts the icing on the cake for me. This is the Mark 41 vertical launch system. We're capable of carrying three different types of missiles. It's every dad's First, dream to have his son be a man and to accomplish great things in his life. It has an alternate surface-to-surface -surface mode with a range of about 15 miles. Al Kalbfleisch is embarking on his second Tiger cruise with his son. Has a range in the anti-ship variant of 250 miles. He's accomplished a lot. He's paid back all the efforts Mom and I have put into his life, far more than we had expected. We get to experience being out at sea together, and I get to share something that I love to do with my dad. The system is a last-ditch defense against anti-ship cruise missiles. It's a 20-millimeter Gatling gun. Fires 3,000 rounds per minute out to an engagement range of a little less than two miles. The Mark 45 is a 5-inch 54 caliber gun. It has a rate of fire of about 20 rounds per minute, and it's very effective against surface targets, against targets ashore, and also against air targets that make it through our initial surface. The USS Calpens is an Aegis-guided missile cruiser. It's one of the Navy's newest ships, most sophisticated surface combatants yeah, afloat in the world today. job is to operate the Spy-1 Bravo radar system. As you can see, instead of this one sweep, he's got a total of eight sweeps that all go around, so it's not like your standard radar. The Combat Information Center, or CIC, is really the heart and soul of the ship, and it's where we fight the ship from. And that's where we keep track of all friendly air targets, surface targets, unknown and hostile targets. First combat updated is DDRT, course speed to carrier 04379. In this battle group that USS Calpins is with right now is the USS Kitty Hawk, the aircraft carrier, the USS William H. Stanley, a guided missile cruiser, the USS Leahy, another guided missile cruiser, USS Jarrett, which is a guided missile frigate, and the USS Sacramento which is a replenishment ship. It begins with a gunshot from the other ship where they, they send a line across, and we haul in on this line, which eventually is attached to a span wire, which we attach to the ship. What we're doing right now with the USS Sacramento is called an underway replenishment. We call it UNREP for short. It's a very complex evolution, very dangerous evolution. It involves a lot of personnel doing things that provide a lot of risk to life and limb, so we try to keep the evolution as safe and as smooth and simple as possible. The probe is seated on board us, and we take on fuel. 
Very quick, a lot quicker than uh, taking on fuel in port. Our ship will take about 45 minutes to refuel. It depends on how much fuel we need. We can go about eight or 9,000 miles without refueling. This is Calpens Roger. I will haul out to starboard and we'll go ahead and proceed ahead to take my station. Our theme song and our breakaway song, whenever we pull away from a replenishment ship, is a theme song from the old TV show Rawhide. And there are very few of us on board that remember watching that TV show. And that really dates us. But it's a great song, and again, the crew just loves it, takes a lot of pride in it. Special moments. I guess that you could really tick off quite a few. Personally, I have had a great deal of interest in the uh, activity on the carrier, and we had a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to see close-ups and takeoffs from the carrier. He's a pilot, and I didn't get to be with him when they did the air show from the Kitty Hawk but I heard a lot about it, and he just loved it. I think sometimes it's hard for somebody that's back home to really conceptualize what we do out here until they actually see it. So it's exciting to see the looks on their face when, when they see some of the things that happen. When the tiger comes on board the cowpens, I see the tiger entering into the sponsor's world. This is one of four of the ship's main propulsion gas turbines. It's an LM. I see that as they're being able to relate a little bit to the the stresses that the sponsor goes through over a six-month deployment or just in daily shipboard life. The reason it looks like a uh, aircraft engine is because it is an aircraft engine. The but it also gives them some concentrated time together. Marine propulsion use by strapping on this power. They're on a 550 foot by 50 foot ship. Have you discarded? Not yet. Yeah. All right, here we go. And they have to once again start relating to one another, uh, usually through communication, verbal communication, yeah. talking about things, right. the past, the present, the future. To fail. They say a lot of things to me. They're, number one, they're amazed at the busyness of, of the schedule that the ship has it, even while we're underway. Another factor is the constant movement of the ship and how tiring that can be on an individual. I guess the fact that the ship is always rocking and rolling and pitching creates quite a number of problems that you don't think a lot about. It's so strange to see people walking down at a tilt, and then when the ship rolls, they tilt the other way. That really is humorous, but quite common. Sleeping certainly has been one of the things I've had trouble with. The very fact that there are all kinds of noises, bells, gongs, telephones, men coming in and out of the rack at all hours of the day and night, it's very difficult to adjust to, to those kinds of changes. Tigers, I'm sure they've heard a lot of horror stories on what Navy Chow was like, and I want to prove to them that it really is good. Man, they're beautiful. Look at that one. Steel Beach picnics are a big morale booster on board the ship. We have them every Sunday. We take all the food up the flight deck. We fire up the barbecue grills just like you would at home. Still hungry, please. Feel free to come here and get some more food. And here the guys can get out in the fresh air, lay out in the sun for a while, listen to some music, and just kind of unwind from having the daily meal down in the galley. On Calpens here, we plan the special meals for the night, like having cake and ice cream and uh, nacho night and pizza night done by other people in the crew other than the cook. Put pepperoni on this one. 
simply preparing the pizzas, things were going relatively well, and that's when I made the fateful decision to try and remove one of the pizzas from our pizza container. Let me demonstrate what happened. I simply went over here, opened up this door, and the ship took a heavy port roll. No correction, that would be a starboard roll. Then, the pizzas all came out on the floor, the deck, and we tried to get them in one by one, but again, the ship continued to roll, so I had to brace myself with my torso, holding the pizzas in here, thereby sacrificing a otherwise pretty decent uniform. And then just when we had them all back in, we took another heavy roll, and they all went on the deck again, including hey. the Commander Everson and myself. He made Bob, it all up. Bob, it it never happened. He slipped and fell. Just when you think it's safe to go back in the galley, you see his go by our song. Is this a wall around his body or what? They were perfectly fine. Pizza. Look at that. That bad when you hit him back with a spray. I've got something to show you. This is where I sleep. Ordered up a king-size no-smoking uh, bedroom, but uh, got only the no-smoking part of it. This is an 8x8 eight eight area here that sleeps six men, three deep, as you can see. My bunk is right here in the center. And you'll notice uh, uh, just about a two-foot headroom here. And I would not recommend this for anyone who uh, uh, jumps up at night uh, because I think you'd have a very bad headache in the morning. The other thing that's quite interesting about this whole bunking arrangement is that it takes a contortionist to get in it. And let me take my shoes off and show you. <laughs> now once in here, it's, it's just a little bit tight. Once you get set, you'll be able to find a comfortable position, and hopefully you can sleep in that position all night, because you're probably not going to have much room to move. Andy, time to get out, man. Can be late for breakfast. It's all your fault. Are you awake? No. You're not awake. What would your mother say if you knew you were asleep this late? What? What would your mother say if she knew you were asleep this late? I'll sleep lighter than this. <laughs> no, come on, let's go. Yeah, we're gonna go make mustard, okay? I'll make mustard. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. He's doing pretty good. He was a little bit queasy last night, but we got him some uh, seasick medicine, so he's a lot better now. Mm, I slept good, but I'm hungry. <laughs> I slept too long and I missed breakfast. Steady as you go. He's toughing it out real good. So uh, he's doing a lot better than a normal guy would do, so I'd, I'd be pretty proud of him. 1980 is the range surge, right? Go through the water, every time you hit a wave, it slows the ship down just a little bit. I would consider being in the Navy. So what happens is, the show never do exactly the speed she wants to go. She's I like it, it's fun, but I don't really know, because I don't have to go stay and watch for five hours and do all that other stuff they have to do. She gets a wave and all that. I like it, like, being on the ship. She may speed up or, or some, uh, you know, one screws with her a little bit faster for a little while. I think the thing that Kirby enjoys doing the most on board is, uh, uh, utilizing the uh, combat uh, tactics simulator down in the uh, EW shop down there. And what is that combat tactics simulator? A TurboGrafx-16 machine. It's got quite a few good video games on there. Seems to be uh, spending quite a bit of time down there. It's great! Great! Fresh open sea, waves crash over the amp there. Can't beat it. First time, first course, anyway. How high is that rooster tail getting, you think? Let's see. Well, it's over my head. I'm standing on the back deck here. How high? 30 feet. Professional guess. <laughs> Oh, 
the performance of this ship is another aspect that I was quite overwhelmed with. From zero to over 30 knots in less than a couple of minutes, and then able to stop within a thousand or so feet. This is more like a ski boat in terms of its handling characteristics, and I was really quite surprised. most memorable time we've had on the Tiger Cruise is just standing around, getting to talk to my dad, just spend some time with him, and kind of get to know him again. You're not getting called by your last name, your rate number, but you're being called by your first name. It makes you feel like you're back in the civilian world. I love my son very much, and I think that our time together has been so special that uh, that, that, that just deepens. And would this be a last hurrah? No, I don't think so. There'll be more time for us, but perhaps not as special. Attention on deck. It's hard for me to, to talk so personally about him and his accomplishments. But the real display of that to me has been the way the captain has appreciated his efforts. Presenting the Navy Combination Medal to Chief Fire Controlman Surface Warfare, Kurt Howard Tallsledge, United States Navy. I must confess that I feel that my son is also my best friend. And perhaps that's unusual, I don't know. But it's it's a wonderful thing for me that that we talk on a level of friend to friend, not father, son. And and to me that's the highest respect I can pay to him as an individual, that I treat him as an equal or even more so, more of a person than I am. This is my last time underway on this ship. I reported on board in March of 1990 when she was about 60% complete. And I helped to build her, and it's going to be hard to leave her. I hope help the crew to find a source of pride and to be able to carry that pride on so that as they go back out to sea and I stay ashore, they'll be able to, uh, to carry on. When you live aboard a ship day in and day out, and when your lives depend on one another, when you're having to protect each other and look out for each other and, and be concerned for each other's welfare, you develop an incredible bond. Every time you hear about the ship's exploits, and whatever they're doing and wherever they are, I think it'll probably bring a lump to my throat. long time to be away from your family. It's been so long since you've seen them. The kids, they're probably about four inches taller than they were when I left. Just to see everybody at once, it's, it's a very intense emotional time. It's a good indicator that you are really coming home. It's like this, uh, feeling of it's finally over. Meet your daughter. The Tigers have seen something, they've sent something that probably they've never been exposed to in their entire life. And that's why going on a Tiger Cruise is the ultimate adventure for many of them, a lifetime experience.